Hi. Hey. Um, we are back. We're back. With some Peru travel tips. Peru travel tips. Uh, so, before you leave your home country, there's a few things that you should be doing. For sure. Uh, number one, go to the travel clinic. Yep, yep. Your, uh, your doctor should be able to connect you with a traveling doctor, medicine guy. Yep. Uh, and or gal. You will most likely need some vaccines and or medicine. Especially if you've never traveled outside of, of your home country before. Yep. Defer to your doctor. For sure. But we will list um, some of the things that we needed. And some of these depend on where you're going in Peru. For sure. Um, so most likely you will need to finish your hepatitis series. Yep. Yep. Um, Usually the, the ones that are standard are uh, hepatitis A and B. Yeah. And I don't exactly remember, but there's like a time frame. Yeah. Um, you get one shot, and then you have to wait a certain amount, certain amount of time, and then it, your next shot has to be within some time period. I'm yeah. not exactly sure, so yeah. Um, make Ask sure your doctor about that. And and also make sure to leave um, some room before you leave to do that. Yep, yep. Uh, another one is typhoid, and there's a couple different ways of having um, the typhoid vaccine administered. Um, one of them is just a shot, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's another one that is actually a series of four pills. And I believe the pills... The pills last longer. I think it's 10 years. 10 years, which I'm due. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, we highly recommend typhoid, um, uh -huh. although um, typhoid hasn't been an issue in Peru for many, many years, but yep. it's a good idea to have them. Um, another really good thing is um, they'll probably give you some, or ask you if you want, and you should take them up on it, um, traveler's diarrhea pills. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you're going to a new place, sometimes the food or just activity level, like all kinds of weird things can happen to your body to cause issues. Yeah. Um, but those pills, they fix you in a gif. Yeah. Sometimes too much, but it's better too much the other way than, you know. Um, the thing that we would want to say about that is that, especially if you're traveling for maybe 10 days or less, it would be super huge bummer to have like yeah. three or four days taken away because of, of issues with diarrhea. So yeah. it's definitely worth it just to take them along. Yep. Um, and so the next two are definitely um, situational, depending on where you're going to be traveling. Yep. Um, so you might need a yellow fever vaccine. If you're going into the Amazon, this is basically what you're going to need. Yeah. Um, also, possibly malaria medicine yep. in the form of pills. Yep. Uh, with malaria medicine, I've, I've been on malaria medication one time, and um, it is really important to talk to your doctor about what the side effects are. Yeah. Because some of the side effects can be pretty severe, um, and you may want to pick and choose between malaria medicines um, based on what the, the side effects are. Yeah. Um, just thought of this one. It's not on our list, uh -huh. but also important, um, especially if you're visiting Arequipa. Or Cusco. Ah, yes. Um, you might want to get some altitude pills. Not a bad idea, um, especially if you've never been at altitude before. I never had the first time I went to Cusco, so my doctor did give me medicine, and I think it helped. Um, you know, you can't get rid of all the symptoms of high altitude stuff, but I was never ill, so... Um, and sometimes people have really, really... Like, yeah. they get violently ill. It's really actually surprising. Yeah. So, so be careful. Make sure you know if you're going somewhere that's higher altitude. Yep. Um, and then the last um, travel clinic thing um, might be um, to update your tetanus shot, depending on where you are with that. Yep. Um, and then also diphtheria. Yeah. In the United States, usually tetanus and diphtheria are administered um, Regularly. together. Yeah. No, they're administered together. Yes. in the same shot. Yeah. Uh, depending on your home country... Uh, you should check out your visa requirements for Peru. So as United States citizens, yeah. when we come in, we don't even need to do any talking with any consulate or anything of of Peru before we come. Um, right at the gate, when you get off the plane, you can get between 90 and 180 days. Usually for 180 days, which is around six months, you have to ask. Yeah. Um, and then depending on the, um, on the agent, they'll give you those uh, 180 days, but the standard is 90 days. Yeah, for a tourist visa. For a tourist visa. Um, but we will link the um, immigration website in the description box below. So check there for the requirements of your home country. Yep. Um, the next thing that's rather important is money. Yeah. Um, so... In, in case you don't know, 
the the currency in Peru is the sol. Yeah. Um, it is a very stable currency. It's um, got some funny money. It's, it looks it looks nice. Um, but uh, just so you know, using a dollar is sometimes acceptable in Peru, the U.S. dollar, but not always. In fact, the majority of places will not accept dollars. And if it is acceptable, you're going to get oh, yeah. a horrible price. Yeah, you'll so get... You're yeah. going to need to change money, but yep. the question is where How and, and when. when. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if you, if you have a bank in your home city or town, um, a lot of times you can go into the bank and they can order different currencies for you depending on where you're going. And that'll take maybe between three to six weeks to get, so just a little yeah. bit of planning. Just for convenience sake, let's say you're, you're planning to bring $1,000 to spend on your travels while you're abroad don't change the whole thousand dollars with the bank yeah um so the exchange rate at the bank in your home country is probably going to be a lot worse than what it is here in definitely, peru definitely definitely um so go ahead so our advice would be to exchange at the most a hundred dollars yeah and essentially a hundred dollars will get you from the airport oh, in way, lima like way more all right <laughs> to some other place to change money. Yeah. Just enough to get you from there to the exchange yeah. house. Yeah, and maybe have a meal on the way. Right. A hundred dollars will go a long way. A hundred dollars so, will go a long way. Um, there's, um, you know, casas de cambios, um, where you would change your money, or in Lima specifically, in Miraflores, there's people on the street right. um, that you can change money with. And those rates will always be better than the airport, yes. which is kind of our, our next tip. Yeah. Do not... If you can avoid it, yeah. do not change money in the airport. You right. will get a horrible rate. Um, again, if if you weren't able to get money in your home country, um, only change a small amount at the yeah. airport, just enough to get you out of the airport right. to wherever you're going and staying right. so that you can find a change house where you can change money. I would recommend never more than $50 US at yeah. the airport. Never more than that. It's going to be a bad rate. Yep. Um, the next one I'm going to let you talk about because I'll be honest, I don't fully understand. Yep. So. So, um, check your electronics, especially if you're coming from the United States. Peru and the United States do not use the same voltage. Um, in Europe, most parts of Europe, I think you're going to be using the same, um, but then you'll have a different problem. So we'll get to that in just a second. So, um, check out on your um, on the thing that you plug into the wall uh, for your laptop or your cell phone or whatever on there it'll say it'll say input the input thing should say between 100 and 240 volts so in peru the standard is is 220 or 240 sometimes but mostly 220 if your device says between 100 and 240 then you're you're totally good for Peru. The voltage will be happy, and your your device will not get fried. And I will say that the majority of cell phone yep. chargers and laptop and chargers laptops. and i iPads, um, tablets, you're gonna be okay plugging those in. Yep. But you should still check, check. because you, you don't check. you don't want to blow anything up. Yep. Yep. Um, and you won't lose your device, but you you'll you'll burn your charger. That's what's gonna happen. So um, so check that first, um, and then also just uh, an additional thing. With, with high wattage. Now, I'm not talking about volt now, we're talking about watts. Um, that'll be the thing that says, you know, a number and then a, 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 an uppercase W. Um, if that is above probably 200 watts, um, you probably don't want to bring that along. Yeah. Um, because 200 watts is going to be larger than a, like a standard voltage converter that you can buy on the street. And you don't want to have to buy a big one because first of all, it's going to cost more money. And they're really heavy. But they're also extremely heavy, which is kind of our next our next uh, uh, suggestion um, is. Before you do that, yeah. I want to say that those high wattage things for for women yes. and and men um, are things like hair dryers, um, straighteners, and curling irons. Those are those are big big hitters. Yep. So if you're someone who likes to have a hair dryer and stuff, be real careful because. Yeah. That's uh, that's an issue. But along the same lines of this next next tip is buy them here. So you can get I don't know you just recently got a, a curling iron. I bought a straightener. Yeah, a straightener, and it wasn't it wasn't. Um, no, it was it was it's a nice brand. Yeah. And, um, like twenty bucks. Yeah, it was around twenty dollars. Twenty five maybe. Dollar um, dollars. Not dollars. Solely. Yep. Yeah. So um, with with voltage converters, you may want to just buy that in the, your destination country. So here in Peru, you can get a two hundred watt voltage. 
converter. So in other words, that's that's four appliances or things that you plug in that are 200 watts and less um, for around ten dollars. And the reason you might want to consider buying that at your, at your destination, and, and this may apply even if you're going from the U.S. to Europe, um, is because they're heavy. Yeah. These little things are heavy. They have a bunch of plates in them to actually to, to change the voltage. Um, and they're heavy, and sometimes they're a little bit space consuming. And so it might be nice to not have to travel with them when you go. And so if you have a little extra, you know, 10 to $15 to, to chuck, um, you might want to get it in your, home, in, in your destination country yeah. um, instead of traveling with it. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is to know what your plug shapes are. Right. Um, so your actual plug that you plug in to the plug-in. Uh, plug into the wall, yeah. right? Um, can differ from yep. country to country. Yep. So here in, in South America, um, I think it's mostly Chile and Argentina's fault, uh, is two just only two pegs that are circular. Um, most of the plugs, like for example in our house, actually have... A, it's it's the the plug can accept the two circle plugs as well as two flat plugs like we have in the states yeah or a lot of what we have in the states like for example our laptop and our phone chargers yeah. are like this so the, the, the most of the plugs you'll see can can accept both At, yeah At, right so but in the states we have a three plug we have two flat ones and a, and a circular ground plug um Many, many, many plugs that we run into don't have that third plug. Right. So you actually need a physical adapter from the three plugs to usually it's the two flat plugs yeah. because most of them will accept that. You can also get the one that will convert the three plugs into um, the two circular plugs. Either way, you'll be, you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, but be very mindful of what you're bringing down. So just to kind of reiterate that, you're going to want to bring down the ability to plug in either two circular plugs or two flat plugs, not the third one like from the States, not yeah. the third circular one. Right. I don't know how this rumor got started that one right. should do this, right. um, but don't carry your original passport on you at all times. It's a really bad idea. Um, it's a really bad it idea. It can get lifted. It can fall out of your bag or your pocket. Yep. Um, don't carry your original. What we usually do when we travel is... Um, you know, maybe somewhere where we're staying has a lockbox. We'll put it in the lockbox. Um, a lot of bags now, backpacker bags and backpacks, um, have like kind of a hidden inside pocket. Um, so we'll stick it in there in a bag that we're keeping in our hotel, Airbnb, hostel, right. whatever. Right. Um, so that it's kept safely away. Um, and then for like double security, if we're leaving a bag that has our passports in it, we'll use our luggage locks and lock, you know, the zipper for that pocket. Right. Um, but you should carry a photocopy of your passport totally. on you, either in your purse, in your wallet, um, whatever, just, um. Because right. really the, the most important information you're going to need that someone's going to have to get from you when you're out and about is your passport number. Yeah. Um, even if you memorize it, you'd be better off than, than carrying your physical passport on you. Right. There's far more things... So a lot of this is experience, and actually, I'd like to ask you guys if you know of a reason why you should carry your passport on like you. Like the original. The original that we just don't know about. Let us know because we we yeah. hear this from time to time, and I I've been traveling around. I've been traveling outside the United States for twelve years. I have not once needed to have my physical original passport no. on me ever. Like you might need your number if you're right. going on tours and stuff. Right. They'll they'll want like your name and your passport number where you're from. But a copy will suffice because totally. that, that'll have your number and everything on it. Right. Um, and then if you lose your copy, you're not screwed. You right. can still leave the country. So. And also, just kind of as a side note, um, making pop copies of your passport is a, is a decent idea. You should leave it with like a, an emergency contact person in your home country, yeah. um, a, a copy of your, of your passport. So that if something happens to you, they have a copy of your passport, they have your number, blah, blah, blah. And um, so you should be making copies of your passport anyway. Um, but... I, I just I I've heard so many stories of people losing their passport, and when that happens, it's a nightmare in yeah, some cases. It really um, is. If you are in a city with no consulate or no um, embassy of your home country, you have a problem. Um, sometimes you have to have your passport to travel, and, in, on a bus or on a plane. Right. And how What are you going to do? It's, so it, it it's a really terrible. I, I I cannot I can't think of a reason why you should, why you would want to carry your original passport on you at all times. Don't do it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna happen, especially if you're like Clint. So Clint is very handsome, and he has these very beautiful blue eyes. 
and really nice hair. Wow. Uh, I mean, kind of be prepared to be gawked at. Yeah. Uh, especially if you have like lighter skin, lighter eyes, lighter hair. And if you're if you're traveling to places that are not really on like a, an established tourist, you know, route. The Gringo Trail. Here. The Gringo Trail here is what they what they call yeah. it. Uh, if you go off that, um, some you may be totally different than what a lot of people have experienced, and the, you're gonna you're gonna gather a lot of attention just simply by being there. And along with that, um, you're also gonna be solicited a lot mm -hmm. um, to buy goods, yep. to buy food, to buy anything. Trinkets, tours, food. Yep. You name it. Um. So just be prepared, and we said it in another video, but just learn to say no nicely. Yep. If you aren't down so yep that's it yep uh another fun one um especially if you're from the states i think would be safe to say uh the cars will not yield to you pedestrians don't have the right they away. do not have the right away other cars do not have the right away i mean it's uh the the streets can be pretty dangerous you have to be hyper aware of where cars are around you how fast they're moving if they see you if they don't just assume that they don't um it can be dangerous so be yeah. be very careful when you're in the street yep uh, the next one's fun. Yeah. Um, so greetings here are different than what we're used to in the States anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so you usually give kisses when you meet someone. Yeah. Um, so for a woman, um, I would kiss men on the cheek and women on the cheek. Important important note. It's the right cheek. Yeah. You're sharing your it's, right cheek. It's always the right cheek. Yep. And it's not the two. Yep. It's not two. Um, it's one. It's just one on the right. Yep. Um, so for as a woman, I, I would greet both men and women this way, and for Clint as a male, he would kiss women on the cheek and shake men's hand. Yep. Um, so that's just a little different if you're meeting and greeting locals or if you have a host family. Yep. Um, that's that's a thing. Yeah. Don't get uh, don't don't get uh, don't jump when when someone comes into your personal space because yeah. they will for for that greeting. Yeah. Another one that's interesting, especially if you're traveling to Peru um, and places like it for say less than two weeks, there's no reason to drink the local water uh, out of the tap. Do not drink out of the tap. Um, just buy uh, bottled water sometimes when we travel because we hate getting all the plastic, um, is get the really big jugs and then refill your um, water bottle. I would highly recommend against uh, drinking out of the tap. There are some places in Peru where it's okay to drink out of the tap, but there's no sense in researching it and taking the chance to, to, yeah. to ruin what might be a short trip on a waterborne illness. Yep. Um, we had a question about this in one of our comments. Someone asked us if it was true if you can't put your toilet paper in the toilet. It's true. It's true. Do not throw the paper in the toilet. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. Because then you'll have to, or if you do, learn how to say, I plug the toilet and I'm stupid yeah. in Spanish. I don't know how to say it. I don't know. I mean, I plug the toilet. I don't no, know. I don't know. Um, just don't do it. Their pipes are smaller here, yep. so they don't have the infrastructure for the toilet paper to go down. It's going to get plugged. Yeah, it will happen. It, it will, will happen. It's not a joke. Um, there's always a bin that's next to the toilet in both men and women's public restrooms and in hostels, People's hotels, homes that homes. you go to. Yep. Um, you do your business and you put your paper in the bin. Mm -hmm. Again, don't put the toilet paper in the toilet. Don't put anything besides stuff that comes out of your body in the toilet. Don't put it in the don't, toilet. Don't don't put anything in the toilet. No paper products, no no toilet paper, no toilet paper rolls, no sanitary napkins, nothing. Nothing oh. goes in there. It yeah. will get plugged. It will get plugged. It will happen. And last. Uh-huh. Food. If you come to Peru, eat all the food. Eat every food you see. Um with some exceptions. Uh, be be a little <laughs> cautious of street food. Right. Um, we've had street food, yeah, and we have not had issues, but we have definitely heard some stories of people having issues. I mean, I not guess, all street food is created equal. No, I mean, I guess use like use your wits. Right. Um, if it looks a little sketchy and dirty and gross, maybe don't do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, also, we've mentioned emoliente before. Oh man, I love emoliente. If oh, you man. don't know what emoliente is, it's this amazing herbal tea. Just go get it. Um, do it. Do it. Um, but I usually bring my own little to-go mug and have them fill up my to-go mug. She makes me carry it around with us all the time. Yeah. Um, so just be cautious, but seriously, eat all the food. Yeah. The, the, you will not encounter food you don't like down here. It, or if you do, there's something wrong with you. Um, those are all the tips we have. <laughs> That's it. 
Uh, so Otherwise, enjoy yourself. This place is awesome. Yeah. People are very patient. Um, if you have any other tips of traveling in Peru or in Latin America, leave them below. We want to we wanna hear about it. Yep. Um, otherwise, enjoy yourself. This is a wonderful, wonderful country to visit. Yeah. Have fun, and we'll see you later.